Welcome back to another video. My name is Miggy, and today we're gonna do some time lapse tutorials and how I do it. But first, let's have coffee because I just came from my morning run. I spent like three hours running and walking with my friend earlier. I had so much fun today, so I need a good cup of coffee. So let's go to the kitchen. Yeah. Oh, let's go to the kitchen. <sighs> yes, we are here in the kitchen, and yeah, this is our kitchen. And it's just like one room away from my room. Yeah, it's very near. Yeah, so I'm thinking what brewing method I'm gonna do today. I'm thinking about doing the Chemex pour over or just a traditional mocha pot. Yeah, I might get the mocha pot. I need to wake up, I need to be creative today. So Let's get into the action. Yo, what is up guys? So welcome back to my video. <clears throat> it's a really good cup of coffee. So today we are talking about time lapses. So time lapse is basically a term in photography and videography, which means time is sped up. So that's where the word time lapse came, the passing of time. So let's say, for example, you are shooting a flower which is gonna bloom. So that would take, let's say, how many months to finish? So let's say you are shooting that flower, so you will have to do one shot per day or one shot every 12 hours it depends on you so you can do a year of time lapse and shrink it into like two minutes video a minute of video depends on what you like but basically that's the compression of time so that is my understanding of time lapse and there are two kinds of time lapses we're going to talk about today and it's a photo time lapse and the video time lapse. So let's start with the essential things you need to do a time lapse. Number one is you need a tripod. You don't need to have the most expensive tripods in the world, but you just need a steady, stable platform to put your camera onto. We want to reduce the vibration, we want to reduce the movement, because you don't want to keep on adjusting your framing when you're doing a time lapse. Having a tripod will give you a better and faster post editing. Number two is you need to have a remote shutter. Why? Because you want to minimize shutter shock just like this, like this. Oh, I'm shutter shock. Oh. It's like shot, I'm shocked. So yeah, basically you wanna minimize shutter shock. That's the vibration that it causes when you're clicking it. 
shutter shock. So there's, it's just a little vibration, but it will affect your image. And if you don't have a remote shutter, most of the cameras today are compatible with your smart devices. So they have their own app, which you can use to remotely control them. Number three is you have to learn how to do it manually. Why do we have to do it manually? It's because you don't want your camera to be changing its exposure, changing its focus on every shot. You have to keep it in the same exact spot every shot. So you have to do your manual focus, you have to do your ISO manually, your white balance, your aperture, everything should be set on manual. If you have a manual lens, way better. So okay, let's talk about the first one, the photo time lapse. So photo time lapse is basically the classic way of making a time lapse. So it's basically a series of photos being stitched together in post. Most of the time lapses you see right now are edited in 24 frames per second or 25 or 30 it depends on what you like in one second there should be 24 frames so you have to take 24 photos just to fill up one second so if you want to take let's say five seconds you have to multiply 24 by 5 so that's how you calculate it and it may take some time to do so when you are doing let's say a traffic time-lapse moving people let's say you want to have that motion blur so you have to set your shutter speed at a slower speed so let's say I'm I usually set mine in let's say around a second so I get that light trails and I get that motion blur and if I shoot the water it would be a bit smoother in post but your intervals would be a little bit longer so let's say when you're shooting a one second shutter speed you should set your intervals around five seconds before you, the camera takes another shot it's because it will be processing that image before it takes another shot and it also depends on how fast your card is so let's go to the second one the second one is a video time-lapse most mobile devices right now has a time-lapse feature what is it so what is a video time-lapse a video time-lapse is actually a time-lapse done for you by the cameras AI so it's basically done in camera so when you finish shooting it you don't have to transfer your files to your laptop or your mobile and stitch it together it's already stitched in camera and it's a faster way of doing a time-lapse so let's talk about the advantage of photo against video and vice versa so when you're doing photo time-lapse you have more room to tinker with your photos so you can get that slow shutter speed to get that part of your smooth motion blur and you just have more room to edit you can customize the look that you want for your time lapse if you want it to be tap sharp or you want it to have more motion blur it's up to you when you're doing photo time lapse versus the video time lapse which is basically just a video time lapse you can do very little in post but the downside of photo time lapse is it takes a lot of time to process you have to edit the videos, you have to stitch it in post, you have to make sure everything is in frame, the same color. Yes, it's time consuming, but it's worth it in the end. It will look better and I think it would look better compared to the video time lapse. So let's talk about the advantage of the video time lapse. The video time lapse is a faster way in making your time lapses and if you're in a hurry, Putting up videos like three times a week so it's better to do a video time-lapse and if you are like a traveling videographer 
your travel vlogger if you want to do a time lapse it's better to do it on a video time lapse but the thing is the downside of this one is it you don't have much room to edit it in post unless you just add effects to it to add motion blur so basically that's two kinds of time lapse the video and the photo time lapse so what you can do in post if you want to be creative is you can add some motion to it you can add like Ken Burns so you want to add a motion from sweeping from left to right or right to left up and down it's up to you just be creative in your time lapse it will be popping like popcorns really nice and sweet and buttery and caramelly salty and everything yeah so that's the two kinds of time lapses that I have been doing and most of you guys maybe are doing and that's how it's done that's the basics and that's the essentials that you need so if you like the video don't forget to hit like subscribe hit the like button the notification bell share show some love see you in the next video let's go